to you for coming in and doing this tonight, Bryce. Like this stuff. Um, it's going to be fun. It's always kind of an honor when someone asks you to come in and like share your story, you know, or talk, or just. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it's, and it's it's important um, to hear. Okay, I think I got a good. Okay, we are. We are live. Um, we're streaming live for Conscious Conversations, and then we're also live on Facebook. Welcome everybody. We're getting ready to start the show. I'm with my uh, my special guest, Mr. Bryce. Hancock, we haven't officially started the show. We're kind of back behind the scenes, but uh, we're we're getting ready to start the show. Um, really excited about tonight's show because we're going to be talking about um, sober living uh, homes for people um, as as a way of um, finding, uh, you know, getting the pattern going of living sober with other sober people, like-minded people. I think it's an extremely a useful way of doing getting sober and and finding getting a routine and then realizing you know, one of the things we're talking about that uh, what are the, what are I was re, I was on the website today and what are the you know top ten things that fun things that do sober it's a great cool thing but then again once you get into that routine and pattern you realize that everything you do sober is is fun yeah so but anyway we're going to start the show I'm going to get ready to go here in just a second. Um, I got just about everything ready, I think, except, okay, here we go. You got a Wi-Fi in here? Yeah, it's, um, am I messing you up? No, it's, it's, uh, fan, which one is it? Fan 008. Yeah, BF. Just try band. Yes, that'll work. Yeah. See if that works. Go for the one above and, and um. Oh. All right. What's the password? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. 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 I gotta do. So I'm gonna do. So we're gonna. I'm gonna get uh, get a quick 10, 10 minute segment in first, and then we'll get we'll put on some music after that. Um, there, there I am. <laughs> awesome. All right. Let me turn the volume down. Who knows how long it will go? I don't think it goes that long. I think Facebook Live. Cuts off after 30 minutes, right? I get full two hours on it. No, yeah, it's, it's weird. <laughs> like, I don't think anybody's going to watch. Um, but sometimes they do. It's it's funny because even, and I didn't think even um, Facebook would do that, but sometimes they do. So um, let's see. I got to get, I got to get two commercials in here first. Okay. Okay, and then one more. I don't know. Is it your tunes? Yeah. And then I got start backwards here. Okay. I think we are ready to go. So we've got two minutes. We've got it. Two to my break. Okay. That's what I'm doing wrong. Okay. Now I think we're ready to start the show. So here we go. We're a little bit, well, it's only 10.02. Oh. I mean, my goodness. Whatever. We're ready to go. All right. So we're not late. No. I think 
I'm just going to, I'm kind of waiting for this one song to kind of. Here we go. <clears throat> So I'll let you know when your mic is live, okay? And welcome to Conscious Conversations on KUHSDenver.com. Broadcasting worldwide from the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. It's Sunday night, October 22nd, 2017, and I'm your host, Stephen Ray Watts. I'm so incredibly delighted to be with you last hour Sunday night at all time zones around the world. Sit back or do whatever you do or like to do and get ready for some uplifting, thought-provoking, and inspiring conversation. As always, plenty of music and hopefully some spiritual growth over the next two hours. Conscious Conversations right here on KUHSDenver.com. Well, it's going to be a great show tonight. And I'm excited because I have um, somebody that I met at Surrounded by Sound uh, Music Festival earlier in September, uh, Mr. Bryce Hancock. I'll tell you a little bit more about him in just a minute, but I want to make sure that we're covered by prayer in this show tonight. So please indulge me with two prayers tonight. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly ask that you bring us together from all over the world for the next two hours, united as one collective heart and soul. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. And a second prayer, just so we're doubly covered. I always feel like the show gets on a good start when we can start with prayer and we're covered by our Heavenly Father. Dear God, thank you that the gospel of Jesus Christ changes lives and relationships. Thank you for removing the barriers between us and making us all members of your family. Amen. Well, scripture tonight, I didn't have time to type it into uh, to my, my computer tonight, and uh, so I just brought it, and it's from uh, Our Daily Bread, and it's a, it's a scripture that I truly love. Something I want to talk about throughout our, our talk tonight uh, with Mr. Bryce uh, Hancock is from John 15, 9 through 17. It's got an important message in it. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay one's life to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. That's John 15, 9 through 17. And I love that 
I love that uh, scripture for tonight. It, it sets the tone for our show tonight. It's a uh, something that we'll, we'll elaborate on it a little bit more as we go through. But also there's one other scripture that I want to share with us uh, tonight on Conscious Conversations. It's just one that I just like to shout boldly, and that is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, tonight we're talking with uh, Mr. Bryce Hancock, Executive Director of Mile High Sober Living. And there are four sober living houses that we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the idea of, of living in a, in a sober house. I've got lots of questions, uh, and, and I'm sure he's got a lot to share with us on the idea of how these sober living homes make the difference in somebody's journey to permanent and long-lasting uh, sobriety, becoming uh, sobriety becoming a, a, a just a natural way of life. Uh, it's been my experience that sobriety as a way of life requires maintenance. It requires um, constant uh, spiritual growth, uh, being being aware that you can never um, you can never you know. It, there's always growth uh, possibility uh, spiritually and also in your sober life. We'll talk more about that uh, in just a minute. So more on Conscious Conversations coming right up. You are listening to Conscious Conversations on KUHSDenver.com. And welcome. Got a double thing going on because I got, I think I got, uh, I had it loaded in twice and it could be the story of my life tonight. If it's going to be that kind of night, I'm up for it. Uh, it just depends. It's just uh, challenges that we'll, that we'll face and, and um, meet as they come along. I'm so happy that you're with us tonight. I want to talk about a couple of sponsors for my show. One of the sponsors of Conscious Conversations tonight is Live at Jack's, uh, a music venue downtown in the 16th, on the 16th Street Mall in the Denver Pavilions. Third level, this is the uh, music venue that uh, supports live music, supports the other sponsor of my show, which is Dotsero My Band. And we are very, very grateful to have these sponsors. We just got back from uh, Catalina Island Jazz Festival and last week, and I was going to try to do the, uh, the show from the island, but the Wi-Fi didn't help, help me out. <laughs> Wasn't able to get that together. So what we're, what we're doing here is, is uh, we're just going to get back to, uh, oh, get back to business as usual, as, as I might say, here at Conscious Conversations. I've got an exciting guest tonight. I'm going to introduce him to you right now, but I wanted to thank you right off the bat. Um, thank you, Live at Jacks, for sponsoring Conscious Conversations, and thank you, Dotsero, um, for a wonderful trip to Catalina Island Jazz Festival last week. Tell you more about that um, as we go on through the evening. Logged in tonight uh, on this beautiful, I mean, it is beautiful um, fall evening in the uh, Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. It's mild and um, about 70 degrees a little, a little bit less than that, and it's already. It's this is at ten o'clock, so um, can't can't do better than that. Uh, but logged in from around the uh, world, and we have people coming uh, logged in from Malaysia, Indonesia, South End, United Kingdom, Merrick, United States, Hungary, Halifax, Canada, 
and also West Liberty United States as far as well as St. Petersburg. Thank you all for logging into Conscious Conversations on KUHSDenver.com. I'm going to bring up my guest's microphone and introduce him to you right, right now. Uh, Mr. Bryce Hancock of Mile High Silver Living, welcome. Thank you, Stephen. How are you? I'm great. I'm really uh, grateful to you for coming in. It's late on a uh, on a Sunday night, and but I find that sometimes it's a it's a peaceful time and a time that you can we can really kind of just relax and let down and talk about things that uh, that we feel passionate about. Sure. So my life sober living. Uh, this is something that uh, this is your brainchild. Is that right? Yes. I mean, I, I'm not the person that invented sober living, <clears throat> obviously. The concept, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. Um, Mile High Sober Living was um, my creation. I uh, I started about a year and a half ago. And was it with one? Was it uh, with one home, or or did you? I started with one home, and I enjoyed it so much that I opened another home, and then I enjoyed that so much that I opened two more. So we've got four homes. Yeah. And Four, three for men and one for women. Wow. Mm -hmm. Are they all in close proximity? Uh, three of them are in Congress Park, close to downtown Denver. Mm -hmm. And then one of them is in South Denver, close to Inglewood. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that no, is that the, the ladies' home or, or? The, no, the, the ladies' home is in one of the, the ladies' home is in Congress Park as well. I okay. put them uh, close to 12 step meetings. They are four blocks from York Street, the oldest you know, AA club in Colorado. Which is, you know, I read that. I read that from your your website, and I and I want to get that. Uh, I want to say that right off the bat. the uh, The website is um, milehighsoberliving.com. It's really easy, and you can find out more about. Uh, this might be an alter, alternative uh, for somebody who who is um, maybe maybe struggling with with sobriety, getting a little bit of of sobriety, and but may, finding it hard to sustain uh, day, day in, day out. This, the idea of, of uh, being with like-minded people, living with, with people that are in the same journey. Right. Uh, obviously, each journey is, is unique to, the, to that person, mm -hmm. but just having that support system is, is immense. Mm -hmm. It's key. Um, you know, it's like ideally like in the continuum of care, which is how we get well, you know, like... Um, there will be somebody who's, you know, there's a crisis. Uh, somebody OD'd or ended up in the hospital or got a DUI or fell asleep in the soup at dinner or whatever it is, right? And our culture tells us that they, how do we fix that? We send them to rehab, right, for 30 days. That's what we've always been told. Um, and after 30 days, they always feel better, right? And then they go home and unfortunately, about nine out of 10 relapses. Yeah. And so ideally, they go to sober living after they come out of inpatient, they've been stabilized and they've been uh, assessed and detoxed, right? And then if they go to sober living, then they can um, they can learn how to live a sober life, you know, and they have support and they have um, structure. Mm -hmm. And they are also engaged in real life. So they're working, they're um, going to school, they're going to meetings, they're dating, they're going to the gym, just like normal people, except for they're not drinking or doing drugs anymore. Ideally. Right. 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 Yeah. And so they get back into life and they learn how to live sober. And at the end of the day, you come home to a house full of recovery instead of going home to, you know, whatever's going on in your, your life. Exactly. I got a really, I, I feel like it's a very naive question that, but I got to ask yeah. it. Um, is it all for single people or is it, is, are there any instances where there are married couples? I don't have any married couples. I don't have a house like that. My houses are gender specific. Mm -hmm. um, I do get a lot of guys whose wives are mad at them, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, my my typical person has been to rehab more than once. They've been up to five, six times in some cases, and they can't seem to put it together after they leave. And and I get guys whose wives are mad at them. They're like, we don't want them to come home. We love them. I love him, but I don't want him to come home. I want him to get well. And so yeah. they come and they give this a try. And a lot of times they haven't worked a 12-step program either, and they're willing to try that too. Now, is and I'm, I'm getting, I'm kind of, I've got so many questions, and I hope I hope I don't, uh, and just let me know if, if, if it, a question isn't appropriate or, or not. I feel like sometimes I, 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 should, I should know more about the, the subject, but 
For instance, now this is obviously not a halfway house type situation. Actually, it is. It oh, is it a is. halfway house type of situation. Okay, so you you get people coming from incarceration. Some, uh, you know, occasionally they come from incarceration. Um, ideally, they come from inpatient treatment, and it's for addiction, substance use disorder, mm -hmm. right? Um, sometimes the guys coming out of prison, they just don't want to be in trouble anymore. Yeah. You know, and so. They're not really all about recovery. They're more about uh, avoiding consequences and getting my uh, PO off my back. I'm looking for people who really want to stay sober and, and like, you know, pursue a happy, healthy life sober. Um, I, I will take people out of prison, but it's not that kind of a halfway house. Do you have to do, do you do all the interviewing? And, I do. And uh, selections? and I do, and I also have a program director, Michael Hornbuckle, and um, my house managers uh, all help with mm -hmm. the interviews. You know, it's, it's a fairly easy interview process. You have to uh, admit that you're an addict or an alcoholic and that you want help. And right. You're willing to work a 12-step program, and you're willing to follow the rules. And that's pretty much the interview process. Uh-huh. And that's well, it. And, and, and to be successful, that that if you do those things, you know, the one thing I, I, I had a guy uh, on that was, it was it was terrific, Bryce, because he was from uh, uh, West Pines, uh -huh. where I um, did my detox. And, and, you know, I, he said, you know what, he said, I get mad at the people that say that, you know, that, that there's only a certain percentage of people are going to get sober. Mm -hmm. He's because he says, actually, if they'll do these simple things, the percentage is 100%. I believe that too. I think 100% of people can get sober if they if they do what's suggested, you know, by people like us who have figured it out. That doesn't mean it's going to be perfect, right? And it doesn't mean right. there might not be stumbling blocks or even relapses. But um, I think you can, I think 100% of people can recover. I really do. I do too. And I think, I think you provide such a wonderful um, outlet you know, I, I think because I know I know um, uh, some people who have and, and they're they're granted they're younger people mm. and they've been they go to the meetings and they look and I and I, uh, they, they go to the recovery meetings and and I can tell they want it yeah. or a part of them wants it. Mm -hmm. And then and then they find themselves. But but they're young and there's lots of things to do out there. And it's, you know, there's the nightlife and things like that. So they're in. They're in this idea of well, how can I do both? Yeah, you know, and they can't. No, you know, I mean, we all want that. We want to have the, you know, the great job and the money and the apartment and the girlfriend, and we want to be able to party. Right. And so there's like there's a learning curve, right? And eventually, it's like I can't have any of that good stuff if I don't stop drinking and doing drugs, right? Yeah, and and unfortunately, don't you think that sometimes it's you have to get a little bit of time and have a little bit of. Uh, uh, serenity of of feeling like oh yeah this this feels good even sober it's kind of like, like i think that you need to have some sense of what life has to offer if you, if you stay sober and if you don't have a sense of what life has to offer um you know, you're still in that chaotic state and when and when i know when i was young there was no one was going to get me to stop partying you know yeah um, yeah i had to become i mean let's say say i was beaten into a state of reasonableness by my by alcohol, right? You know, and my yeah. alcoholism, and, and but the thing is, it's like I always thought I was going to be missing out if I had to stop. You know, like never drink again. I thought I'd, be, I'd miss out, and the truth is, my life began when I got sober. And if I could go back to college and be sober and be sober-minded and um, you know, well-intentioned and clear-headed, I mean, imagine what I could do. I could, I could travel. I could. Um, you know, do all kinds of things. And I didn't do any of that stuff, really. I so totally relate to that, Bryce, because I, I if, you know, from my music career, too, from, from college throughout, you know, beginning a band and getting and, um, you know, putting out uh, recordings and things like this, you go like, oh, man, there were so many opportunities that I know I, I, I messed up. Yeah. You know, and, it, and it's, it's, it's unfortunate. Well, we're, we're going to... Uh, I, I've got to see where we're at here. I think we've got, yeah, we've got another two uh, two minutes uh, that we're going to talk before we we have um, before we have a music break again. We've got so many things to talk about. I, I uh, 
we started with um, you started with one house. Yes. And so, what was it like to 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 did you did you acquire the house? Uh, I. So I'll try to be brief. If I go over, just cut me off. Oh, yeah, we'll pick it up on. Up. Okay. But I was looking for something to do. I hit a point in my sobriety and in my life where I wanted to find my purpose. I wanted, and I wanted to give back, and I mm -hmm. wanted to be around recovery. But nobody can make a living going to, you know, AA meetings. <laughs> and so I started like, um, just like seeking and searching and asking questions, big questions like, who am I? Who do I love? What do I want to do? And I just. I just followed these, like, I was watching this documentary about music cares, about, um, mm -hmm. it was Bob Forrest, it's called Bob and the Monster, and he was a rock star, and now he's an addictions counselor, and he ran this group, or was in it, called Music Cares, and they help musicians, and I, I was thinking, that's really cool, I could do that, and so I went to a Music Cares meeting, and I asked the guy, his name's Marty Ryan, he's a counselor at Fort Collins, what do we need in the, in the recovery community, and he said, we need sober housing. And I had no idea what it was. Like you just expressed a second ago, like, well, what is it? You know, I didn't know. Yeah. But I started to and just ask some more questions. And after a few days, not that I was going to do it, I, it was already done. I was doing it. I was going to do wow. it. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. knew I'm going to be a sober house guy. I didn't know to what capacity, and I didn't know you could make a living at it. I thought I would just help people. You know? Wow. And so I, I, I. I gave such a great sales pitch on this concept to my father that we help. He helped me buy a house. Um, Hold that yeah, thought because we're, we're we're gonna when we come back yeah. we'll get right we'll pick it up right there. Okay. Thank you, Bryce Hancock, for being with us tonight. This is Chris Tomlin on KUHSDenver.com, Conscious Conversations. I'm kind of getting uh, getting my groove here going where I think um, my stuff's going to start cooperating with me. So that's good. <laughs> that's good. Okay. But we are free from radio, and now we can... I can um, hear my voice. Am I coming in? I don't I'm, know that I need to. Well, I need to um, make sure that you can. I had you on... Um, should be on four. I did see your signal. I just okay. need to bring you up a little higher. All right. I can certainly talk louder too. Uh, you're doing great, dude. You're you're awesome. Um, so I, I just need to make sure I'm okay. I'm doing a little maintenance, and then we'll continue on. Do you mind if we uh, can you talk over some music, or I'll turn it down a little bit? No, it's okay. I'll just take it off for the breaks. And um, we got. You know, you don't really need to hear yourself in the headphones, but um. When I did my show, it made me feel more like I was on air. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I know. I, t I totally get that. I totally feel Which that. Which is silly, but... <laughs> so, um, yep, and then we got... And I'll bring up two more songs. Um, and we'll be in good shape. This is the part, this is the, the, the multitasking part that, um, you know, I, I wish I was a little bit better at. Um, but it's, I do the, I, I, I'm getting better and it's, so every once in a while I'll get thrown a curve and uh, I have to. Look at all those windows you got open, man. That looks hard. <laughs> it's not as hard as that. <laughs> it's not that hard. Um, but it's, but it's, it is fun. And, um. It's challenging because I, I got to be honest with you, I'm, I'm most definitely not a multitasker. And, and um, but it's teaching me to, to, to do that. And it's an, it's, a, it's a, a good exercise in sobriety too, because, you know, I, I mean, I was in, at my addiction took me to being afraid of my own shadow, you know, and it took me to that place where I was just a shell of, of zero confidence and, um, thinking I could do anything and and you know for a musician that's not good it's a bad place to you know be as a musician. yeah you got to have just the right amount of, of confidence and um and and, and get get a little bit of humility with that just so you can connect with an audience mm -hmm. and then but it, you know I had somebody that I love dearly uh tell me dude you suck 
you can't play anymore. <laughs> Get it together. You know, you really? really are horrible. You used to used to be a great player, and and um, you know, and I was, you know, so it was it was something that was that I mean, it was like getting hit with yeah. a brick wall. You it know? was somebody you respected. Yeah. yeah. And he didn't yeah. say it to be mean. He was just like, I miss. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And you know, and that's what's it's interesting without getting too too far sidetracked, but that was what was interesting and so inspiring about um, the Surrounded by Sound uh, day because you know I got to hear your band and um, and 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 you know all you guys were sober mm -hmm. and well and you know and then I saw and then I saw uh, Michael's band mm -hmm. and I went and you know I went yeah yeah, yeah that's what I'm talking. Yeah, he's about. my programmer. Didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, he was my first house manager. Is that yeah, right? He's real inspirational to me, like as just a sober guy. Yeah, he's. Uh, I had him on the show. Oh, you and, did. Uh, I did. Oh, cool. And I actually had Marty Ryan on the show. You few, did. Yeah, last year. You know all and, my people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, the great thing about it is, is I, I, I get to meet the people in in the recovery community, yeah. and it's um. But there's some awesome people. Right? Oh my gosh, just just some some. And it's 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 funny because you might meet somebody who's got um, that is very passionate, who's got maybe two three years sobriety. Then you um, meet somebody who's got twenty eight years, yeah. you know. And it's like, yes, this the whole idea is uh, you that brings it back down to the one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Right. So, okay. So I'm kind of I'm, I'm what I'm trying to do here. Is place myself okay? I'm I'm in need to go find a sober house. Um, I I I need to, a place to to be with like-minded people, so I can learn how to live sober. What? How? How do I apply? What is the? Is it like a general? I mean, is it is the cost about the same as a, as living um, in an apartment? Yeah, um, I like the average price of a one-bedroom apartment in Denver is about fifteen hundred dollars. Amazing. It's expensive, and so, you know, we think of halfway houses or sober houses as charities, and there are those sober houses and halfway houses. But God forbid I relapse or you relapse, and I got to go someplace and cool my jets and work the steps again. I don't want to be in one of those um, halfway houses with guys out of prison. I don't want to have to learn how to fuck. Right. Do you know what I mean? I do. And so, as long as it's always a charity, it's always going to be a flop house. And now there's like, and this is a new, there's a lot of sober houses that are nice. They're safe. I mean, the, my first sober house is a Victorian. And it was a $750,000 house in Congress Park. And it's nice. Like, it's it's nice. It's nicer than my house. <laughs> it is. And so, it's about $1,500 per person. Mm -hmm. um, two beds per room. And it's not a long-term thing when you go live for a year. You He's going to ask you that. Yeah, you go, you, you go in, in your job, and I tell them, I remind them, you're here to work the steps. You're not here to get your PO off your back or your wife to let you back in the house. You're here to work the steps and go have a good life. And, you know, come back. Tell me how you're doing. Send me Christmas cards. I'll see you at an evening. But um, you're not going to post up here for a year. You know what I mean? That's not mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get these dudes on their way. And these women too, and they can stay as long as they want. But oh, okay. At some point, I would like them to go out and have a good life, you know, and you know, do stuff. You know, find find your purpose and your passion. I I believe if you can find and do what you love, you're bulletproof. I believe that. Mm -hmm. you know? I agree. And and that's part of it. You know, it's not it's not a no drinking a not drinking contest. You know what I mean? Like it's. You know, like tap into that power. Right. You know what I mean, like. Well, yeah, it's like the idea of finding that inner, inner passion, that inner mission to, to thrive. Mm -hmm. Find that way you can thrive. Yeah. Look inward. What is it that you want to do? What you know what I mean? Like, why are you here? Like, my sponsor believes God gets us sober for a reason. That He does it for a reason, and um. So I teach that. That's a class I teach as part of my sober living program. Uh, find your passion class, you know. Mm -hmm. And when he talks about it, you're just like, whoa. Yeah. You know, and, but I believe it. You know, I believe if I can get these guys to start to like, I don't know, question why they're here and um, 
follow the, the, the threads in their life, you know, and follow their joy, you know, that, that that's really doing something. Well, and I think that is key. I mean, if you look, if you think about it, you know, I, I you know, for a musician, um, you know, you would think that that love of playing is that passion. And you know what? You know, I, I at the end of my drinking, I don't want to play. I didn't, I didn't want to go to the gig. I mean, I was just getting through it. It was just get there, get it done so I can, you know, go drink. And I didn't even enjoy drinking at the gigs. You know, it's like, so, and the funny thing about it is, Bryce, I was going to ask you this point of view, is that many people say, okay, well, what is it that you do? I mean, what are you interested in? Well, I drink. And what are you interested in? I'm interested in drinking. And so how do they, when they get, when you remove that, then they're in search. And that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, after a while, like when you take it away, initially, I feel worse. And, you know, when you take alcohol out of my life, I feel awful because alcohol is not my problem. Alcohol is my attempt to solve a problem. It's my solution, right? And the problem is me. <laughs> and so, you know, like by inner work, like the steps or therapy or whatever it is that you do, you know what I mean? You strip away all that BS, you know, and it's like, what's left, you know what I mean? And um, I think that's what it's about, you know what I mean? Uh, like I had such a great experience working the steps and getting clean and just being around the authenticity of meetings and people in recovery. Yeah, and yeah. I just want to share that, you know, because I get it, man. Like mm -hmm. I woke up. I woke up out of the hypnosis that I've been living in. And the same with my music career. It was just like, it was a drag, dude. I mean, it was just like survival, yeah, you know? Yeah. It was the passion's gone. Fun. Yeah. Sure, I'm good at something, which is, you know, fun. But, yeah, yeah there was no passion, yeah. no creativity. Uh, yeah. I yeah. don't know. It, there's no thrill. There, no, there's, there's no, no that, thrill. that there is. And there and that's like, that, that there's one thing is about, um, is about music is that there is that you do get a music high. I mean, there's def, there's no doubt that there's an exhilaration um, to to a, a, an enthusiastic crowd and a band that's playing together well and uh, you know doing uh, originals. Um, it, it, you know, music that you care about deeply. Uh, yeah. It's all good. It well, is. we're thirty seconds away from going to uh, our next radio segment, and um, so. I'll uh, I'll get you. I'll see if I can get your mic up a little bit higher. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> okay, we're going live. Going live. And you're listening to Conscious Conversations on KUHSDenver.com, right here in the beautiful, I mean beautiful, city of uh, Denver, Colorado, the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. Uh, KUHS Denver uh, is where we are at on the internet. We have people from uh, all over the place uh, this evening uh, logging in. We're going to keep track of where they are all around the, uh, the world. And also... We're going to continue our conversation with uh, my special guest this evening, uh, Mr. Bryce Hancock, Executive Director of uh, Mile High Sober Living. This is uh, a, a group of four sober living homes mm -hmm. in the metro area. These are uh, three in the Congress Park area. For those of you that don't know, they're listening from around the world. The Congress Park area is, is uh, just east and of uh, uh, downtown Denver right and uh, what a uh, what a wonderful wonderful experience that the first thing we were talking about when we when we left before is how long would would somebody normally stay in in your facilities I ask for a three-month commitment um, you know in, in the industry like the continuum of care like I was talking about before the magic number seems to be a year um, if you can stay sober for a year you've experienced one of every holiday You've yeah. had enough bad things happen to you that you've stayed sober through that you can pretty much take it from here. And, you know, I don't know if this is true, but they say that the science tells us that the, uh, you know, the levels of dopamine and serotonin in your brain resets to a level that's normal 
before you started drinking or using. And I don't know if that's true, but it sure sounds good, right? It sure does. Yeah. <laughs> and so a year is like the magic number. And because statistics show that um, it, it, your chance of, of staying sober long term um, go up to 50% after a year. And then if you do relapse, you get back into recovery on your own faster. Mm -hmm. So the trick is to hold on to people, you know, support them as long as you can through that first year. And, you know, our culture tells us, you know, you go to rehab, you go to inpatient treatment for 30 days. That's fine. That's all well and good, you know. But when you get out, what you know, real recovery starts the day after you get out of rehab and then the day after that and the day after that and the day after that. So the trick is to support people through that process, you know. And I think if I can get them 90 days clean in back in society around people and you know, functioning as members of society, that it'll really give them a head start. And I'd love to keep them longer, but you know, it's expensive. So I ask for three months. I'd say 70% make it to three months. Some of them stay longer. I've had guys stay for almost a year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And and it and the idea being that it's it's uh, supporting uh, not only their own recovery but but engaging with uh, other people that are living in the home. Yeah, I mean that's you know was uh, part of recovery. You know. Um, is connecting with other people. It's not isolating because that's sort of what you know addiction is about. It's um, it certainly was for me, yeah. And, and you know, Gabor Mate, who does a whole thing about um, the opposite of addiction, isn't sobriety. It's connection, you know. And we need to learn how to connect with other people because willpower will not work. And um, we're not we're social people. We're social creatures, you know, as human beings. You yeah. Know? So, well, and I and I love that that and that works that that kind of works in in conjunction with our scripture tonight of, you know, the idea of of Jesus telling us and I love the you know the, the whole we hear this so many times, even in in just in just regular society you know the the golden rule of you know love you know love your neighbor as you love yourself okay great you know that's and that that's a beautiful that's a good place to start and yet. You know, going one step further, love your your neighbor, love your your brother as I have loved you. This is what Jesus said, and this is what I know of that that it's about putting yourself out there and and uh, you know relating, like you said, connecting mm -hmm. and feeling the pain or or just being there for somebody when when they're struggling or or offer some. Uh, a bit of advice. One, if there's one thing I know about recovery, like-minded people in recovery tend to help each other because we've been through similar situations. Sure. You know, we're connected not through, um, you know, great times. We're connected through pain, you know. And mm -hmm. when I came in, you know, what do they say? Is, you know, we'll love you until you learn how to love yourself. I didn't love myself. I hated myself. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, people accepted me in that that authentic sharing that happens in meetings and in recovery, you know, there's what's going on and then there's what's really going on. And then in, you know, in early recovery, you have to talk about what's really going on or you're not going to get well. And, and if I don't help other people, I suffer. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, quite honestly, I, I think one of the biggest, uh, I think the biggest thing, one of the biggest things in recovery is service. You know, the idea of, of service being something that, yes, this is necessary for you to remain uh, sober and then tell you you do it enough, you become a little bit good at it. You, you get some feelings of, whoa, that felt really good to help somebody else and see them thrive or find themselves a little bit. Then you start saying, oh, I like this service thing. It, it's, it reminds me of what we were talking about when we uh, off air is that you were saying, you know that you you had to you'd met that that place in sobriety where you said okay what's next mm -hmm. and the biggest thing that that struck me bryce is when you said i want to help people mm -hmm. and then you found out not only could you help people but you could make a living at it as well mm -hmm. that's cool yeah it's really cool uh you know you like helping other people like i'm generally happiest when i'm being nice to other people yeah. i am you know like my tendency towards selfishness became exposed early on in sobriety as being very stupid. And, you know, 
even if I get what I want when I when I um I'm not happy, you know. I'm like I said, yeah. Like, helping other people, like you know, that connection and that flow, you know, like um, just being part of main content, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, that's just that's just what it's all about for me. That connection for yeah. Now tell me a little bit about you know the the what about age differential? Do you do you do you have um, specifics on? On like the the differences between I mean you gotta have a like a guy my age live in there and then I'd say a guy that's like 20, 25 and say man I need to get sober. You know I don't know how old you are, but I've had I just had a, a gentleman who was sixty six and you know I have guys that are twenty two and you know I think the average age falls around twenty eight to thirty. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm guessing. You know. Um, but some of the younger guys are really mature, and some of the older guys are really immature. <laughs> just, really? Yeah, you just you know they might have experienced more, and they might have had you know more careers of varying success, and maybe a couple mortgages. But um, you know, alcoholism doesn't get who it gets. It, you know, it'll get anybody at any time. Right. And um, you know, I I do try to put people together where they're gonna thrive with each other you know I do sure but um, you'd, you'd be surprised sometimes like um, people will get in the house and they'll take a leadership role of the younger guns and help them you know mm -hmm. what what about you know and and I I, I gotta to me I, I just have to go there is it's it's absolute abstinence correct yes and it do you find that that that's a difficult concept yeah <laughs> <laughs> Especially for an alcoholic or a drug addict, um, you know, some of the younger guys they went off the rails fast because they got into hard drugs, mm -hmm. and they still have that sneaking suspicion that they'll be able to drink normally one day. Maybe they will. I don't know. I was an end stage alcoholic. I was a late stage alcoholic. You know, the jig is up. The writing was on the wall for me. I I can't drink. I can't put that in my body. Right. You know, that phenomenon of craving takes over. I don't know when to stop. I can't stop. And um, yeah. So yeah, it's a hard, you know, once you wrap your head around it, I mean, to, to try to like fathom never drinking again, but you don't do it like that. You just do it one day at a time. Right. Yeah. But I mean, the, it, you know, the thing about it is, is I see, I see some of the young cats and, and, and they're like, or I should say young guys, that's um, um, talking like a, a musician, but you know, I see some of the younger guys and gals and, and, you know, and I look back at it, Bryce, and I remember thinking, you know, one of these days I got to do something about this drinking. Yeah. It's not today though. It's yeah. and no, even even though I could see consequences or I could see, you know, oh, man, I sure don't want to, you know, don't want to lose my, uh, you know, this gig or I don't want to lose my job or you know or I don't want to lose my marriage or whatever, you know, and those things happen, you know. But and it's hard for to, to, where does a, a young person get that idea? Okay. I can begin life again, right now. Where do they get that idea? You know, uh, I, I mean, I was dying from alcoholism, and I, and every day I knew I was dying. Yeah. But it was like, you know, I'm not going to die today. I'm just going to get drunk today. I've been right. doing this for decades. But right. you know, by the time they come to me, their life has been burned to the ground. You know, they nobody ends up in rehab. You know, for no reason. Something bad's going on, you know. And there's right. an opiate epidemic right now. A lot of these guys are absolutely, on and some of these women too, you know. Um, and you know, you just you just have to make a choice. You know, there has to be a point in your life where it's like, am I going to take responsibility for my life and for this disease and put it in remission and learn how to keep it in remission, just as if I had diabetes, or am I going to mess around with this thing for another decade? You know, I've drunk the bottom for like two decades. The, the, is do statistics and or is your and or your experience say to you that if somebody now I know you're not and maybe you're not dealing with this because it doesn't apply within your sober living uh, realm or or, or na you know community does the the if somebody says okay I, I gotta quit the drinking but you know I'll just keep it going on the marijuana it, it helps me it helps me go. you know I'm asking for three months you you know <laughs> if 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 marijuana is no problem, great. Quit for three months. You're in a sober living house. If you Bingo. can't quit for three months, it's a problem. I mean, right? You know what I mean? Bingo. <laughs> right. And 
you know, I don't know what's going to happen moving forward. Um, you know, my job isn't even to fix alcoholics and drug addicts. It's to carry the message. Right. That's my job. That's the 12th step. That's the spirit of the 12th step. And, you know, even if they don't get it this time, if they can put together three months, when they go back out there, if they relapse and they're out there for a while, they've seen the other side. You know what I mean? Just like me, I saw the other side. And AA messed up my drinking for good. You know, oh, my goodness. That's so true. <laughs> That's so true. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that, and, and I and I love that because I think there is something to that. You know, if somebody just, you know, if they can get just enough to where every time they take that drink, they're feeling that, uh, they can hear those, somebody saying, well, it looks like your way isn't working. I want you to try ours. Um, it, it's it's true. I got to ask you this. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a, I don't know if it's a new way of getting sober, but I've heard there's, people that are getting sober through their doctors. Uh, it's a program. Some people have to talked to me and said it's called Go Sober. Yeah, or, I've heard well, of that. Yeah, and it's it's like, it's basically, and I don't know the program that well, so it's hard. I, I, I don't want to misspeak, but it's basically with, with vitamins and with uh, other uh, ways of, of, you know, getting the body healthy and weaning the body down to where it, 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 but it, it's not necessarily uh, cutting out alcohol. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I can't speak for everybody else. All I can, I can speak for myself. I, I, you know, you know what works best. You know, AA. Do I have to do that? I mean, I believe that I had a spiritual malady. I, I, I think that was the answer to my problems was to get some sense of spirituality. And, and it, I got to stop drinking. Like nothing's going to work if I continue to drink. Um, you know, I don't know. Yeah. All I know, all I, all I can know, all I can do is just tell my own experience. And I approached AA for a while like I had a choice and had zero success. And I've known people that have done go sober um, and it works for a while. Mm -hmm. But then they just creep back. I mean, it's a progressive illness. It's a progressive, chronic, fatal illness. And it, it always starts slow and then it gets worse. And it... You know, you can dial it back for a while, and then you start drinking, and it gets bad again fast. You know, yeah. I see it all the time. Guys will get a little bit of clean time, and then, and then like a couple of weeks after using again, and they're just right back to where they started. You know, and it, it 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 almost never fails. It's just, and it's sad to see too because it's like it does describe. And I wish I could have. I, I mean, I wish I could say everybody could read the the, the book Alcoholics Anonymous because. It really describes, and I've given it to the people who really get a, sometimes get a kick out of it. I don't know if, I, if that's the right term. Get a lot of good out of it um, is you know people who are trying to understand the alcoholic mm -hmm. because they're, they're they've dealt with them and are figuring out why does this dude or this gal act this way, <laughs> and if they can just see because I mean I know I'm, that's me. I'm reading the book. Yep. Yeah, oh, that's me. Yep, I got that too. You know, it's like it describes it so so well. It was written by late stage alcoholics who recovered for people that are you know chronic alcoholics. And before that time, people just died. They they didn't recover unless they had you know some sort of a spiritual experience. But you know that's what the book does, and that's what the twelve steps do is they help you find a spiritual experience. You know? Well, I think. Um, and, I, and we'll talk more about this um, in the in the next segment too. But I think you've tapped into something that is 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 powerful, and that is fellowship. Mm -hmm. The fellowship of one person reaching out and saying, "Hey, man, you can do this. I'm doing it. You know, let's do it together." Mm -hmm. And that idea of fellowship and and uh, community within a sober living is, I think, what what gives uh, your 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 sober living, uh, the power, mm -hmm. um, along with, you know, spirituality, yeah. the power to, to give people that, man, and when you give, get that uh, three months or six months, I love that idea of, of one year because, I mean, that's, I remember coming up on one year and I'm going, man, it's a big deal. I'm, oh, man, it's, I'm going to be a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big deal. One year? Yeah. But all the things you described, like, I counted the holidays sober. I mean, well, let's see. And you know, I used to. I tell this story too much, but um, I used to. I walk from uh, from Live at Jack's 
over to my P.O. box, which is on 14th and Alati. And I did it the other day, and I looked, and I used to do that walk and say, oh, so this is what eight years sobriety looks like. Mm. And it's a beautiful thing. Same walk, and after 30 days, I'd go, so this is what 30 days mm. looks like. We'll be back with more from Bryce Hancock on Conscious Conversations. This is Dotsero, the Monger Gang. And we are clear. We're clear from radio. So, you wanna, do you want another Pellegrino? I got another one. No, I'm okay, okay. with this. All right. Thank you. I was going to. Uh, I drink a lot of water, man. I, that's so good. I mean, that's like, that's. I drink probably between one and two gallons a day. Wow, man. Your doctor's probably just extremely pleased with that. Well, I just feel better when I do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, musicians, you know, I think we like, we get, uh, we get dehydrated and then once we're, we're there, it's too late. You know, you know, like if you sweat at a gig and you don't replenish that, you know, it's, um, it just, yeah. you know, it's hard, just, it's hard to get it back to where you need it. I know. I like feeling good. I don't, you know, I just, I like having energy and I like sleeping well and not being stressed out. And so taking care of myself, like physically, my physical health, you know, so I'm just obsessed. I'm just obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. All of it, you know. So, Bryce, how long, do you mind me asking how long you, you've got your sobriety is? No, four years and three months. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, man. Which isn't a long time, but, man, it's been great. Well, look at what you've done. Yeah. Look at what you've done. That's, I mean, that's, I, Yeah, I've really, you know, it's just amazing. And I really just wish everybody could have the same experience, you know. Do you see yourself... Um, I mean, I know the, the, the whole idea of um, the one day at a time we, we is our, you know, uh, we go by that and it's for a reason and it's excellent. But do you see yourself uh, continuing this as a, as a model, maybe taking it to other places? Um, or do you just want to stay in our community? And um, you know, I'm open minded to anything. Yeah. <laughs> I really, I'm enjoying it and I'm good at it and, you know, it's stressful, but like, you know, you know, like people will say, you know, like, I want a big life, Steve. you know, I really want to have a big life. And then they'll like start to get it or like, you know, they'll lose their crappy job or that their relationship is no good and they'll go, this is terrible. What's well, not, you asked for a bigger life, right? You know, and so I, I want a big life. And so as it comes, I'm just learning to manage, you know, the problems that come. I have 36 beds now. Um, it's a lot of people. It's a lot and of people. their lives are at stake, right? And so, you know, I don't know, it's a trip. But yeah, I'd like to get bigger. I'd like to have more sober houses. I'd like to have a whole community. And I just, I, you know, I believe in it. I believe people are getting just milked dry in the first 30 days. They're just getting, they're getting screwed. You know, there's it's like thirty grand for thirty days. Of rehab. Oh my goodness! Yeah, they're just getting screwed, and then, and and they're not staying sober, right? And so I think that sober living is like the best tool that we have to keep people sober because I see it, you know. So I want to keep doing it. Do you have, uh, do you do any uh, like twelve step meetings at your facilities? Mm -hmm. And so so they have the opportunity to go to partake in 12 step, um, work with their, with their home. Uh, yeah, because it's, 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 it's softer. You know what I mean? You don't have to go into York street with a bunch of like, you know, you don't know what's going to happen in there. It could be some crazy old time or yell at him. You know what I mean? But in their house, it's like they feel comfortable to share or they should be feel comfortable to share and to kind of like work out some of the bugs. And I bring people in, you know, I bring like people that inspire me in. We do it. We do a speaker meeting every Tuesday. We do a step study on Mondays because I'm making them work the steps. So I might as well help them, right? We do an emotional sobriety on Wednesday. And then that find your purpose class on Thursday. And I have four houses. So we do a different house every night. Wow. But I make them go to, they have to go to outside meetings too. And I can't make anybody Mr. AA, but for three months, they're going to have to do that. You know, I, I want to ask you two. Uh, these are I'm getting these questions that I'm just I'm so in, I'm so intrigued with this. I, I just love this this whole program. 
Okay, so now do you do you personally do you still go to um uh I love AA. I, love, I, lo I do. I love AA. I mean, and I'll let them do whatever they want. They can go to CA or NA or mm -hmm. MA or there's a PA now for pills, you know, whatever. I don't care. Is that uh, right? Yeah, it's just the twelve steps. You gotta like get you know, and there's smart recovery and go sober, but you're not going to get fellowship from go sober or going to see your doctor. You no, know? you're, and that's the whole pr problem that I'm seeing is that, you, yeah, I mean, you're, you're not addressing a very major part of why you were drinking. You're focused on the drink, yeah. right? And like we said before, you take this away from me, and I feel anxiety, and I feel depression, and I'm not mm -hmm. really very happy, right? So yeah. if everything's focused on that instead of on looking inward and like just getting getting well, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just think that's where the focus needs to be. And um, you know, you gotta have your people, you gotta find your tribe, you know what I mean? Like the fellowship. Right. They're not the, the people that are in your homes are 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 not incarcerated. They're they're working, they're 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 living, they're um, so they can go out and do whatever they want, right? I mean yeah, well, and then I don't. I don't want them to work at a bar. You know, I don't want them to be bartenders. I want them to find like you know anything not in the spirit of recovery. They'll be questioned on. But yeah, they can date. They can do whatever you know. And and the women especially are so like emotional, but they're so supportive. You know, mm -hmm. and um, you know the guys are like it's like a big fraternity. Yeah, you know, it's something as dumb as as and I don't. I shouldn't say it's dumb, but something. You know, some people feel very self-conscious about themselves when especially you know in this awkward uh first bit of sobriety so old. going out and dancing is very they got to see if they can do it number one and if they without being self-conscious mm -hmm. um but do you i mean do you i how do i put this would you say like if, if one of your clients uh was saying you know i'm Think about going out and to the club and just you know do just do some dancing and stuff. It, do you is that something you would say? Well, do you feel strong in your steps? Oh right yeah, now? there's a conversation that goes along with it. Like why um, is that a good idea? Right. Are you doing it for access to alcohol? Right. <laughs> sure. But I play music. I'm around. I'm in bars all the time. I played in a bar two nights ago. Michael plays music for a living. Absolutely. Too, right. I don't think I'm gonna drink. But when I first got sober. I didn't play in bars. I didn't like bars, you know, and I don't hang out in bars. I don't. I mean, mm. I'll play music and then I hang out for a little bit, but then I'm out. Yeah. And I see that. You know, I was that way too. I mean, the last place it was it, it took a little time to get acclimated in sobriety to where it was like, now I just want to experience. Mm -hmm. And um but but I know uh you know that that I you know, one guy, one of the guys at my at first time I went to recovery meeting, a guy said, "Well, what do you do?" And he said, "Well, he said I'm I'm a musician, um, and I um, I'm a co-owner of a bar downtown." And he said, "Looks like you're gonna have to change what you do." <laughs> I owned a bar too. Yeah. I owned the Toad Tavern for. Uh, is that right? Wow. And I ended up selling it. Mm -hmm. um, but I did. I sobered up my first six months. I owned it. I just came to a point where it's like, yeah, this is a drag. I hate this. Well, it's a different, yeah. I mean, you're dealing with... 15 employees, they're all nuts. <laughs> um, I just didn't want to do that anymore. Yeah. And, and, that and, and there's a lot to be said for that. And, you know, it's it's one of those things, too, where I just said, here's, you know, it's like, it like it also says in the book, you know, if, if you have a good reason to be there and you are protected spiritually, you're spiritually fit, and you're not using it as an as an excuse to possibly. Because don't you know? Do you do you believe the idea that many people that relapse are setting that relapse up way ahead of time? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then when someone does relapse, I always try to do like a, a relapse autopsy. What was going on? You know, and then you they can always break it down to like you said a resentment or mm -hmm. or connecting with other alcoholics or going into the sponsor or going to meetings or whatever it is you know um you got to stay in that headspace you know that recovery headspace sort of yeah do you do you find that your uh that your clients uh seek you out 
and and they all come to me. Good. Is that what you mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, do they? And 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 you feel me comfortable? Personally? Yeah. Yeah. Some do. I I've just worked real hard, you know. Um, like I go right to treatment centers, and I just would just walk in and introduce myself, and you know, just they want to know that you're not crazy. Yeah. They want to know you're not sticking ten dudes in a room and yelling at them. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? They want to know right. that I'm in it for the right reasons and that I'm going to be here for a while. So once I hit one year, I could feel like a shift in the area, like with all the treatment centers. It's kind of like they all sort of, and they didn't, but they all, it, it felt like they all said, he's okay. So you don't have, now, you, you don't have to go through like a certification program or um, all of this, uh, I mean, get state credentials and federal credentials. Silver and houses are protected by the Fair Housing Act. And American Disabilities Act that says you cannot discriminate against alcoholics and drug addicts if they're working in program recovery in the house. I can't stick 10 dudes in a room, like I said. Right. But if I would put my family, if I put two family members in that room, I can put two, you know, yeah. recovering alcoholics or addicts in the room. Well, sure. And and do 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 any type, do you ever get any, um, you opened up like this whole idea of, do you ever get any like social services that to pay, pay you no, a visit? No, but you know, like the city of Denver has certain um, rules that they like, and I'm just, I'm negotiating some of those rules. But yeah. like, you know, the Oxford House has been around for decades, and they, they sort of started this whole thing in Oxford Houses. And um, so there's a whole thing, you know, in a lot of communities, like, I don't know where you live, but if I went to, like, you know, Highlands Ranch and tried to open up a sober house, I assume the neighbors would be like, eh, eh they're not doing that here. Oh, really? Um, right, yeah. And that happens a lot where they were like, no, we don't, we don't want any people in our neighborhood. Not in my neighborhood, right? Wow. I guess I should have, you know, I guess that's naive of me to, to think, well, Pretty sometimes much. I feel like, you know, I feel like you, you see somebody like you that's trying to make a difference and, and trying to help people. You think that everybody's on board with that, but you, yeah, that's all I am, but not in my I neighborhood. Am, but not in my neighborhood. Right? <laughs> yeah. You go over there and you just do great. You know? but, but it's like I'm in Congress Park. Mm -hmm. um, it's a crowded neighborhood and it's, you know, there's a lot of craziness going on down there and there's a lot of drinking going on. And, you know, I talk to the neighbors. Um, you know, you, you know, like my one neighbor was renting to tenants and he's, he was concerned about what was going on. And I was like, well, can you drug test your tenants? And he said, no. I said, well, can you tell them to get a job? No. If you want to kick them out, how long is it going to take you? He said, yeah, it's kind of a process. I said, not me. I, I help them get jobs. I, they're clean or they have to leave. And so they're actually better. You know, there's all these studies that they're they're better members of society. They're better for the neighborhood, mm -hmm. people in recovery. Well, and I would think that it's it's almost better. It's like like you say, I would think that it's better for it to be in a place like Congress Park, which is a diverse community. Uh, and there's and and Denver has become a a diverse uh, city. Mm -hmm. um, and so if if you try to isolate and and find you know, this little oasis somewhere outside in the suburbs. Well, that's not really necessarily. Well, I mean, you could do that. I mean, that helps people. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be in the hot part of town. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't, like, let's say I have a big house in Aurora. What, what's my argument with the guys giving and the women going to be? Did you go to a meeting? Why not? No, I didn't get a, I couldn't get a ride. Or I didn't have time to take three buses or whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know? Where I am, it's like they can walk down there in their bathroom. It's four bucks. They just walk. You know? I don't have that accepted argument. Fine. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. They I don't have that argument, right? And yeah. um, I just, you know, I believe it's about experiencing life and living life and being around. You know, I have City Park. I have Congress Park. I have Cheeseman Park. You know, the Botanic Gardens, the zoo. You know, there's all this stuff down there, art, culture, museums, yeah. and that's what it should be about. You know, because what's fun is drinking and doing drugs, and they can't do that anymore. So they gotta find other stuff. That's well, fun. and and that's and and that's what I was gonna ask you is is that uh, it seems to me like one of the things that was key to me, and it still is, I think, Bryce, is is I I'm I like to keep busy. You know, and keeping busy is is a good thing. It helps with you know, uh, you know, it just, it, it keeps my mind, you know, occupied. Um, at the same time, you know, you know, 
I think it helps people that in, in early sobriety to keep busy, yeah. um, relate with other people, joint experiences together. Well, do you remember when you first quit drinking, how long the day was? Like how much time is it? <laughs> day yep. stone sober but then after a while it's like there's not enough time in the day to do right. all the stuff i want to do because you have a full life well and and even just just the the beauty of knowing that when you lay your head on the pillow you're gonna fall asleep right you know and if you don't fall asleep for me personally that that's just extra prayer time yeah and um and it's it then i'll always fall asleep anyway and it's so that's that's a beautiful part of, of sobriety uh, that I've that has been, you know. But this the idea of of you know the joint experiences and keeping busy I think are 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 wonderful. Yeah, they start doing stuff with each other. They start hanging out with each other, and you see it. You know, they start to have fun, whether they want to or not. They start having fun. I see it, and I'll tell them, I see you're having fun. <laughs> yeah, can't fool me. No, I yeah. see you're enjoying yourself. Right. We're going to, um, we got a, a, two little commercials here, and then we're going to go uh, back on the on the radio uh, for another uh, 10 minutes. I told you this goes fast. Oh, yeah. We're already halfway through. And, um, oh, but I so, I so appreciate you coming in and talking um, sobriety and, and uh, talking about your I am thrilled. I get so I get so intrigued by people in, and I find it's almost everybody. I don't see that many people who get into um, sobriety and then just say, "I'm riding off into the sunset." It's the service aspect. They always want to give back, and so when I see a person like you that really, I mean, that's that's putting your money where your mouth is, you know, and, and diving in. How did you get started? I mean, how did you? Get get the the loan to go through for the the home and, and all that. I talk to my dad. Is that right? Well, I um, yeah, I sold the bar, mm -hmm. made some money, I bought a house in Conifer. The real estate market went. I sold the house and I had a I mean, I made a pretty good money when I sold the house in mm -hmm. two years because I was miserable up there. I, I didn't want to live there. I wasn't happy. I didn't like my job. I had this terrible relationship that had ended that I wanted back. And I was just like, what am I holding on to all this stuff for, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I told my boss, I said, I don't want to work. I want to hang out with my son. I sold the house. I let go of the relationship and I made some money. I went down to come to sit uh capitol hill I lived yeah. in a small condo that i've owned forever wow yeah and i just started like i said started meditating and praying and thinking like what am i going to do you know like this can't be all, all it's all about right just not drinking and being miserable and so i had you know i made some money and my dad helped me and you know the good thing is it's like our relationship is great now because we're working together. You know, mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, oh, I'll say. Right. Just uh, and being a part of a community. I mean, and uh, uh, I mean, this this is something that I didn't even know there was a community. <laughs> I'll bet. I'll bet the community just just. I mean, it's they love having you there. Maybe. <laughs> Ten seconds and we're on on the air. And you are listening to Conscious Conversations on KUHSDenver.com. It's uh, Sunday night, October 22nd, 2017. And I'm joined by uh, uh, just an absolutely uh, compelling and interesting uh, special guest tonight, Bryce Hancock. I want to uh, take an, a, an opportunity uh, real quick uh, to, to start with a, a quick uh, devotion uh, just because... I wanted to uh, interject that as part of our, our show tonight, uh, the spirituality of uh, sobriety in many ways. You know, I, I will I like to be an advocate for there's there's many roads to sobriety. There's many different and an open mind is is a mind that that can grow spiritually. But I also believe that for me personally, the difference that has come has been through the living word of God. And through uh, my my uh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this is a, a devotion from Grace for Today, one minute devotions. This is uh, this little this little book right here that I picked up at the Orange County uh, 
Well, it's, it's a little uh, convenience store at the Orange County uh, John Wayne Airport. And they've got this little uh, spiritual book section that is, is better than some of the Bible bookstores I've been in. It's incredible. Anyway, this is uh, called God Performs His Wonders Through You. And this is uh, one of my favorite scriptures, 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And you have to really buy into that. Sometimes worries beyond your control prey on your mind. You may be concerned about your job or an increase in rent. If you're anxious and worried about a personal matter, you must remember that God is greater than all the circumstances and situations that could befall you. For a moment, you may have allowed fear and uncertainty about the future to obscure your image of God. However, he is forever constant and he desires to share the deepest experience of your life with you. God's omnipotence will sweep away all petty thoughts and all uncertainty will disappear. And here's the prayer that goes along with that. Your works are perfect, Lord. And even when I drink from the cup of bitterness, you never forsake me, but will help me to understand that with you, I will survive. Amen. Well, I, I'm thanking uh, Bryce for, for being with us this evening, but I also want to thank people from uh, Manassas, United States. Uh, man, I can't even, can't even get close to pronouncing that uh, that in Mexico. So I thank you for logging on. Australia, I can say that. Leipzig, Germany, Thailand, Indonesia, Sweden, Silver Spring, United States, and also Malaysia and Chandra, India. Thank you for tuning in to Conscious Conversations tonight. I'm just having a great time with my special guest, uh, Bryce Hancock. I wanted to, I wanted to get. Uh, this is kind of the, the, the time in the show where I where I spring it on you. Oh. <laughs> so I say, okay, we're talking sobriety, and, and I love the way you talk twelve step. And if we talk twelve step, it automatically se seg segues us into the idea of the spiritual. Uh, idea of how do you uh, pr present this to your to your um, oh, what do we call them clients or, or I call them clients okay yeah how do you or do you um, yeah you know um, well my experience is that I you, to do a twelve step program you don't even have to believe it will work. You know, that's that's one of the things that's great about it is you just have to do it. And I remember telling my sponsor, I don't think this is going to work, dude. And he said, great, <laughs> just do it. Right. Right. And so you start to do it. And then through the process, you sort of you, know, you strip away some resentments. You sort of clear your conscience. You start to look at yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, you have to stop relying on yourself, you know, and without even knowing it, um, you, you you have what well, they, they it's the higher power you can find your own higher power is what they say mm -hmm. and you know they call it God um, but they give you they allow you to, the twelve step program allows you to sort of come up with your own theory you just you just you open minded and you just kind of seek and then you're guided right mm -hmm. I just tell them they have to go to meetings <laughs> and and I'll remind them your way didn't work that's why you're here right and um, that's that's all they have to remember is that oh, okay my way is terrible and I have to go to these meetings and I have to get a sponsor and I have to work the steps and they sort of you know I see them get better I'm just addicted to watching people get better mm -hmm. I just, wow I love that I love it. it's, I'm addicted cool. to the miracles of watching people get better in spite of their own selves you know yeah I mean I approached it like I had a choice too you know I was raised to think that if I want a good life, I'm going to go get it. I do it. I got to go to school. I got to get this job. I got to do this. I got to do that. And, um, you know, it's miserable trying to do everything yourself. Yeah. It, and, but, but it's not like, you know, I, there's so many people that come into the, you know, the, the community uh, support rooms and they're, they've either had a bad experience with religion or, uh, or they've, or they have no idea where to begin. Um, you know, and, and so, so many of them are just saying like, you know, I, I, I don't even want to talk about that. I just want to stop drinking. And yet there's so much about the spiritual 
side of things that will help them mm -hmm. make the journey a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. But some of them, so they're not, I mean, you don't have to worry about people coming into your sober homes thinking that you're going to, you're going to pound God down their throat. No, not at all. I, I mean, I'll tell people, you don't have to believe in God to get sober and to work a 12-step program. You don't. And right. I believe that. And you're not making them go to church? No, I'm not even trying to make them be Mr. AA or whatever. You know, I just, I just tell you, you, everyone's mad at you. <laughs> Your life has fallen apart. Physically, you're doing terribly. And, you know, you feel bad, right? But, and you're fighting to stay that way, right? You know? It's like, wow. just try something else. You know, just three months. That's all I'm asking for. When's the last time you had 90 days clean? And they always go, like, look up and they go, uh, yeah, it's been a long time. Well, then just try it, you know. And if you don't like it, you can go back and we'll refund your misery, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? We will, right? And so it's like, just try it. Just be open-minded. And being open-minded is, like, so amazing things happen when you're open-minded. Absolutely. Yeah. And and it's 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 the whole idea of, um, you know, we, we we say we say love and tolerance is our code, yeah. and it's and it it's true. It's when we start it's when we start closing our mind, and being judgmental or making decisions on something that we don't have either the capacity to make the decision on at the time, and uh, you know they I'm I'm a true believer in this Bryce that that the spirituality of the program uh, will uh of 12 steps will come. Mm -hmm. It will be, it will, and it will be found. And that's the best part of the journey is it's, if you tell somebody to like a movie, well, they may like it, right? Or they may not. Mm -hmm. But if they discover that they like it on their own, then they're out telling everybody that they like that. Because that's their experience. And, you know, I experienced, I had an experience of God I, and I experienced it. You know, I wasn't taught it and don't tell me anything because I hate that. Right. Right. But so I started to experience things and I started to realize because I always thought that every situation needed my influence somehow in order <laughs> to get what I wanted, which is fine. But all I'm doing is going based on what I know exists. And, and so there's a whole other world out there. There's all kinds of things that can happen when I stay out of the way. Right. And that's, you know, that's, that's the power of the universe, you know, and I can tap into it when I stop insisting that I get my way all the time. Mm -hmm. And, but I had to experience it and I had to go slow, you know, like, mm -hmm. I think that I just wanted to quit drinking too. I didn't want anything. I didn't want all this other stuff. Wow. I thought I'd be fine if I could just stop drinking. Mm -hmm. But, um, there's a whole amazing life, you know, when I got, when I stripped away all my character defects, all this, you know, that voice in my head that I always listen to that I think, you know, that's myself, that's my sense of identity, that's my sense of self. And it's, it's terrible. It gives me terrible advice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it does. It was killing me. And um, when I stopped listening to myself, I started listening to other people, you know, like I, I started taking suggestions from other people who drank like I drank, did drugs like I did, and who were now happy. And I wasn't happy. So I started listening to their suggestions and all these things started to happen. Um, and I couldn't, I don't know where it came from, some of these things. Like, at some point, I didn't want to drink anymore. And I had never experienced that. And I know I didn't do it myself. So what did that? You know what I mean? You know... It, do you think that many people, or or do you do you find that your your clients in in do you think that they assume that that once they 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 not they they stop the drink if they can do that for three months okay, and they 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 assume that they're going to be struck happy uh, that all of a sudden okay now I'm going to be happy or I think what I'm what I'm hearing from you. Is that you're telling you're saying okay no here's the idea commit to commit to my uh, sober living community my home for three months here's what we're going to do we're going to start with activities in the evening which are classes that teach you how to learn to be happy in sobriety because isn't that the key I think so if you're not happy what's the point what is the point if you're not happy you're just going to relapse you know and I'm not saying you're going to be happy all the time you know right but there's got to be some joy in your life, you know, besides drinking and doing drugs. Um, 
that's, you know, it, what happens is they, they're not buying what I'm selling at first usually because they've never worked a 12 step program. And so they come and what they'll do is they'll look for that one other person to bellyache about, man, this place sucks, you know? I don't have that other person. They're all going to meetings and they tell the new guy or the new woman, let's go, let's go to a meeting. And they go and they're just swept along. They just kind of get right on board, right? Mm -hmm. And then they start to have fun because just taking alcohol in my life was amazing. You know what I mean? Like if you could just stop drinking, like your skin gets better, physically you feel better, you start to be able to sleep, you know, and not everything gets better. Um, it just gets better and you start to find your friends, you know, like um, you'll, you'll start to have fun. You know, Those like experiences, yeah. there's a lot to be said, for instance, say, just for instance, I, I, I don't have, you you go to that meeting and you hear something that you didn't hear and you, you get, it gives you food to think about, something to ponder that you hadn't thought about. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden you're, you're, you're running down to Pete's Kitchen or, or uh, or somebody somewhere in the neighborhood and you're just having a, a meal where you're you know you didn't order that beer to go along with it mm -hmm. you know or you just and you're just sitting talking and with somebody else that's sober mm -hmm. and you're spending time you're gaining time and moments being in the moment that and then you lay your head on the pillow mm -hmm. uh sober mm -hmm. that's beginning do you, how much do you, I mean, the, you have to be a, a proponent of that routine over and over is, is giving you that. I'm a big fan of what my friend calls, he calls it reality therapy. You know, like we all think, oh, I need therapy and I got problems. It's like, yeah, that's fine. But, you know, therapy's not till Thursday, it's Sunday. Okay. So tomorrow you're going to wake up and you're going to have <laughs> breakfast and then you're going to go to a meeting and then you're going to look for a job and then you're going to go to the gym and then you're going to come home and have dinner and then you're going to go to another meeting. So that's only Monday, right? So therapy's still on Thursday. You got to fill those other days right. with reality, you know, and you get into a routine and, um, you know, you click into the program and then um, work in meetings, work in meetings, work in meetings. And um, it starts to like click you yeah. know? and you start to like realize, hey, I'm living, you know, and um, your life becomes fuller. You know, we talked about it earlier. Like when you first get sober, when I first got sober, there's a lot of time in the day. I didn't know what to do with it. And now there's not enough time in the day to do all the things I want to do. Right. Because my life is full. Well, and you know, that that's that's a thing too. It's a, it, it's a full life. And you were talking about it before is having a big life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you go like, whoa, there's a lot of possibilities out there. It's, mm -hmm. only, it's like you can get to a point where you kind of tilt, you know, or there's those times when you do, you know, uh, for lack of a better term, in, in early sobriety or sobriety, you feel icky. Yeah. And there's there's ways that there, we have tools that we help each other with. Sure. And when you're in a sober living community, then you have other people, like-minded people, that you can say, hey, man, I just don't understand why I'm not feeling it today, but what do I do? Yeah, we're not all sick on the same day, though, right? Exactly. So just this too shall pass. Um, I can go down a checklist, you know, um, reach out to another alcoholic, try to help somebody, call my sponsor, just go do something to get out of my head. Mm -hmm. like for some reason, when I'm not having a good day, I start to feel like I should be able to like, I should be able to tweak something and make yeah, it better. I feel, like, it. I feel inadequate, you know, like yeah. oh, I'm not doing something right. That's just the way it goes. Yeah. And what are you going to do? You can't. You know, it's funny, it's, it's funny because it, I've learned, you know, the, the old, the old thing of, you know, just. If you got, if it, just pick one thing, endeavor to do it, and many times it will lead you to the next thing that will help you begin to get out of your your head, like you, like you're talking about. Yeah. It's it's very important. Uh, do you how? I mean, I know you're hands on, and I we probably probably should wait to get into this to the next se segment. But I'm I want you to be thinking to how you could tell me about. Do you? What does your week look like as, as far as do you visit each uh, each home mm -hmm. each day or or is it a is it a like a, a week a weekly thing like you'll spend some time at this home or then spend some time at that home? I'm I'm like basically crazy lately with four homes. I have a program director Michael Hornbuckle who oversees the homes and he visits all the homes. I try to visit all the homes and I I generally do throughout the week go to all the homes. Um. We have week, a weekly meeting on Sunday where, 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 with each house, 
how specific where they talk about what's going on in the house, how is your week, how are you doing, mm -hmm. who's stealing whose Oreos, are you going to meetings, are you working steps, are you getting to therapy, is your mom still mad at you, know, whatever, you know, just like regular life stuff. And then um, we drug test twice a week and we brought the wives if we feel necessary so that they know they're, you know, being held accountable. And um, what do I do? I mean, I'm just like all over the place, dude. I go to meetings myself. I like to go to the gym. I mm -hmm. still play music. Um, it's a lot of work. Yeah. You know what I mean, but it's like, even if I have nothing to do when I wake up, within uh, 30 minutes, uh, all things, they just come. You know? Yeah. Things just happen. There's always a crisis or someone needs help or, you know what I mean? Well, it's like you say. I mean, there's 36 beds. 36 beds. It's a lot of people. That's a lot of souls in those rooms and beds. And I really want them all to get well. Yeah. Well, and and that and I, I that makes me feel so good to hear that because that's reality. That's the reality of of the mission. Um, and I believe it's it's divine. It, it it is. It is. I hate I hate the disease of addiction because mm. I've seen it. Uh, I've seen it hurt, and and I see when I got the got into the rooms, I was so sheltered from death, Bryce. I mean, I had never experienced, and I saw people, people that I started relationships with, that couldn't get it and mm -hmm. died, and mm -hmm. I went. I mean, I just it blew me away, and and I'm going like, this is real. It is a real thing. It will kill you. It will. And it does kill people, every day. Every day. Yeah. And it could be stopped. That's the thing, you know. It's like it doesn't have to be like that. I it's it's well, I I want to talk about your music uh, a little bit when we get when we come back because we're we're getting to the point where after uh, another few songs we're gonna we'll have another segment and we'll um, have to say good good night at some point to get you back uh, to your your own house uh, on this Sunday night. We're gonna be. Uh, I also wanted to ask you about um, you know. Uh, you mentioned Michael Hornbuckle, and, and he's he's been great, uh, and it, it sounds like he's been a, an excellent uh, part of your your uh, your program. Yeah, he's and, great, uh, and what a what a phenomenal musician. I yeah. am I feel a, a very very uh, privileged and honored to uh, to know two incredible musicians like Michael Hornbuckle and and Bryce Hancock. I want to talk about your band too a little bit when we come back. All right, so getting ready to hear another one from uh, one of my favorite artists. Uh, Chris Tomlin, this is Jesus Messiah, right here on KUHSDenver.com. I'm having so much fun, I forgot to go to the bathroom. All right, man. <laughs> and we are clear from radio. We're having such a great night here. I'm going to refresh our 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 feed again so we know who's who's joining us here on Conscious Conversations. Istanbul, Moscow. India. Now there's a place, I always love it when there's a place that I had never heard of before that tells you how big this world is of ours and how many people have uh, access to internet. Uh, Albany, Oregon, uh, Bin Binjai Sumatera Uttara, Milford, Connecticut. We've got United Kingdom, United K uh, the UK is in the house. And also, uh, Italy. Ah, that's when I, that's when I grab a, uh, a San Pellegrino and say, "Thank you, Italy, for, for the uh, beautiful San Pellegrino." This is my my favorite drink in sobriety. I I can't imagine. I can't. I just have to say, I love Perrier too. Um, I like them up. I like them the same. But but I do believe it or not, I can tell the difference in the taste. Sure you can, Steve, <laughs> but I can, <laughs> and they both taste great. But welcome to Conscious Conversations, everybody. I've got to get another song, a couple songs up, and then we'll have one last segment with, uh, that's how fast things go on Conscious Conversations. It's been an exhilarating and inspiring, transforming, I hope, conversation with my uh, guest Bryce Hancock tonight. Uh, we're gonna also share one more, uh, probably one more uh, 
devotion that that's in, important for me to to share tonight. Uh, but I got to get these songs up before it, before it's too late. And then I. We'll go with this one. Okay. Now, your your band is called Rubber Planet. Yep. It's a cool name, dude. <laughs> Thank you. How long have you guys been together? Uh, almost 20 years. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. Same members? No, we couldn't do like a million drummers. <laughs> <laughs> How did I know that? Uh, is that everybody? That's everybody's story, right? Uh, so yeah. me and the singer and uh, the other guitar player have been together for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I, I, uh, I got a chance to see uh, them perform at Surrounded by Sound and uh, it was just a great show. It was. It was not only. Um, of course, I, I love bands that play originals, and but it was a great. It was a great show to watch too. Bass player has a had a fluorescent green bass. He's a trip. He's a trip. <laughs> he's got a, the, all the tattoos and everything. And um, now he's so. Is he sober? No. Oh, he doesn't drink. He's never. Yeah. He's not a drinker. He, he never has been a drinker. He's not Isn't that crazy? He just doesn't like it. <laughs> Uh, they're out there. They are. He's a normie. What do they we call him? Yeah. He's just a yeah. teetotaler. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and in, and you you do you were doing a um quite a few originals. All the originals. Did. We might have done. We might have thrown in a couple of covers. Yeah. Just for fun, like in the middle of our songs. But yeah, we we did probably six or seven albums over the course of our career, and we toured. We go to the Midwest, and we go out to L.A. and um, Salt Lake City, you know, Las Vegas, um, and we played Red Rocks. You know, we had, yeah. locally we had kind of a little fair amount of success. You know? mm -hmm. Couldn't like bust into the big time. Like we came up with the fray, and they okay. did it. We did not. Yeah. More okay. power to them. You yeah. Know? Well, you know, it's all about. You know, the the thing about it is with the music business is is it. Many many times it's about um, it could be it could be um, you know just getting a, a song on a, on a TV show um, it could be yeah. a, you know a, a, a song in a movie you know uh, it it could be a million different things but you know long you know to me having a band together that's played and uh, stayed together that long yeah. that to me that that says something well we're friends right and there's a camaraderie and you know a history. And you know, there's a connection there yeah. right, with some other guys. Chemistry and chemistry, and then you know, like just doing anything that you're good at is fun. I don't care what it is. Like having some success in life, you know, even if it's just something like that, you know, mm -hmm. it's like an amazing experience. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so I don't know. It's been a lot of fun. You know, I even with if you take away any success or or lack of success or anything, I'm not bitter about anything. It's been fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the music business is, is, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's doggy dog. It's, it's rough. I mean, it's, yeah, it is what it is, you know, and, and, uh, but you, you, you do, you take the little, uh, successes and you, and you enjoy them and you, you know, I always tell my, I always used to tell my, my students, you know, fall in love with the music first mm -hmm. and then, Whatever else you get, you can either, you know, you can either take or leave because it's going to be fleeting, you know. Yeah. Um, but if you love the music, nobody can take that away from you. Right. You know, at the end of the day, if you like what you did, I mean, that's really, you know, I mean, like if you can feel it in here, like I, I was yeah. true to myself, you're good. You know? Yeah. Like you're bulletproof. Yeah. I, that, there's no doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. Well, we're going to have, when we get back... Um, we're going to have just, we'll, we'll be able to, uh, I got to put, we did that. We'll have one more segment, uh, Bryce, and then, and I'll get you on your way. Um, 
I, I wanted to ask you a question. I'll, hopefully, hopefully you'll remind me. But has has anybody approached you about uh, bringing your your model of of sober living homes to to other places um, out, outside of say Colorado? No. Um, did you expect that to happen? I don't know. I expect I'll continue to do this uh, as big as I can. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm just going to keep going with it. I don't. I don't know what that'll look like. And and do you have any idea of how many people that you you've helped uh, over the? I'm just getting started. Um, you know, no. Yeah, <laughs> I but I mean, I mean. I if, if, if we do the rough math, 36 beds, 36 and you've beds, been doing this how long? Just a year and three months. So three months <laughs> times 36. Times five. So, I'm I mean, terrible at math. It'd be about 180 people if I could keep that going a year. You know, it, that's that's amazing. Give or take. Yeah, it's awesome. That's phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, that blows me right out of the water. It's just... To be able to make that kind of an impact on this deadly disease. And you know what, if you think about it too, it's not just people like me and like you and my clients. It's their families. And, you know, there's a whole ripple effect. As, Absolutely. As we get well, there's a whole ripple effect of people that benefit from our success. You know? There's, and, and that's so well said because it's it's it goes so way beyond... The addict. It's and, not just me. It's yeah. all the people who I, who I touch, and then all the people who they touch, and all the people who they touch. You know, and I have a little boy, and his his story was supposed to be my dad died when I was two. Yeah. But it's not. <laughs> right. That's not his story. He does. He'll never know me as a drunk person. Right. And you've you've stopped. You've arrested that possible future. That that cannot. You know, knock on wood, if I can stay sober, he'll never know. Yeah, I've stopped it. You know, it, right. it's like I just got to a point where it's like, you know what, this dysfunction has got to stop somewhere. You know, this mm -hmm. whole, it's a family thing, right? It's got to stop. But someone's got to stop it. Right. And 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 it, that that takes courage. If you're thinking about if you're thinking about, you know, if you're struggling and you're, you're thinking about an idea or another way to try to find that that uh, get that anchor, that foundation of sobriety, you know, I encourage you to go to uh, log on to mile high, uh, my high, mile high sober living.com. And you can, and find out, you know, I always say just a, a phone call or a little bit of research, you know, it's not going to hurt anybody. No, you may, you might find that you'll find an alternative, something that's going to click. That's if, if, if 12 steps are not your thing, that's okay. But you got to do something. You can't just progress. You let your disease progress. You got to try. Try everything. I don't yeah. Care. Go fly a kite. I don't care what you do, but you got to try something. Well, and you know, I see so many people with, like we talked about, it, come, it comes back a, a little bit full circle. Is that I've seen so many people with good intentions uh, go into the, the meetings, and yet there's something that's not quite working. And this is an, uh, this sober living idea as an alternative seems to me like it's like, and it's not like, for, for instance, uh, Bryce, it's, and I'm not, please don't take this the wrong way. I mean, I, a big proponent of, of a place like Stout Street, mm -hmm. um, because those places are needed and that program is proven, but this is another idea. Yeah, but there's overlap with those kinds of programs too. You know, uh, a lot of people will not be able, they need a higher level of care than just 12 step meetings. Mm -hmm. And Stout Street's great. You know, mm -hmm. I love lots of friends that went to Stout Street. Mm -hmm. you know, um, in those kinds of programs. Would, would, I, I don't, I'm not trying to sell 12 step programs. I just want everybody to get well. You know right. what I mean? I really do. But I mean, but you're providing a place, a safe place with fellowship, with, with um, direction, I mean that's I think one of the keys, uh, the things that I really like about hearing about your your uh, your homes, Bryce, is that there's there's something to do on Monday night, there's something to do on Tuesday night. There's, there's something, always something to do. Yeah, always something to do because we got to stay, we got to keep our head in the game. Yeah, we got a disease. <laughs> yeah, and it's, we and you you go a couple of days and you don't think about it and you start thinking yeah, I'm okay, I'm not okay. You need to, you know what I mean? We need no. to stay. In that mindset, I have a disease and I need to do something for it every day. Right. 
It's 24 seven. That's the other thing that you realize once when you, you get sober is that there is a nighttime that, you know, that you can be awake in and okay. And you, know? you also realize that not everybody's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was shocked. I thought everybody drank like me. Well, and but Bryce, we live in a community here, especially in Denver. It's in Colorado, okay? I understand. But we, we're, you're talking about the, the opiate epidemic. That's even the unseen. We also have the legalized marijuana now that's become well um, embraced. Yeah. And then, so sober living does happen. And by men, it's so many people live sober yeah. and, and, and succeed and love and, and have, have wonderful lives. Yeah. It's so great to see that this is happening. That's why I was so excited to be a part of that, that rally uh, yeah. at, at the Capitol is like, this is what our community is about. Right. It's about people helping each other yeah. and realizing that, that there's so much more to life. There is, and I don't, you know, I don't care what what's what part of the spectrum it is. If it's harm reduction or it's complete abstinence or how you achieve these goals, um, but people are dying, right? And yeah. So we got a, we got a, we got a. Some, I mean, everyone's going to die, right? Yeah. But there's a lot of living that needs to happen. Absolutely. You know, it, as much as possible. Yeah. And it is a community. That was a great thing, right? It could be greater. Oh yeah, it could be way. It could be better. Well, because it is, it's it's our voice out there as well. Because it, it's a voice of saying, yeah, okay, you. This is Colorado now. Is it has? It's sad that many times Colorado was known for skiing and mountains and and beauty and colorful colors. And now, may you go around and people say, oh yeah, you're the first state that legalized. Legalized weed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's not my conversation piece. But it's um, <laughs> it's a yeah, okay, whatever. I imagine people do. Do you get um, people definitely from from the thirty day rehabs that will um, filter into this over living? What places like Stout Street also possibly? Or, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I've gotten a couple guys from Stout Street. Um, I know a lot of people in the industry that work as professionals who got clean and sober from Stout Street specifically. Um, I went to their gala and I knew a ton of people. Yeah, there, you know. And, yeah. Um, did you go to Stout Street? No. no. I no. I I got the, I got a chance to meet um uh, Deidre uh, uh, Tiger okay. at at Stout Street, and she came on the show, and I went over there to talk with her. She gave me the most incredible tour yeah. of of Stout Street, and then there's another friend of mine who um is in a in that program right now. They and help a doing lot well. of people. They help a lot of people. People that. We're, you know, at the very bottom that we're not going to recover, you know, yeah. and they help, they help them. Yeah, no, they just say they, there's, this is the last alternative. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, it's one of those kind of places, like, do you want to go to prison or do you want to go to Stout Street? <laughs> right. We've got one commercial and then we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, wrap it up and, uh, and say goodnight and get you on your way. Um, but I, it's been, it's been an absolute uh, blast having you in, Bryce. Appreciate it so much. And you're listening to Conscious Conversations on KUHSDenver.com. You know, we uh, we got started uh, with the show just a couple minutes after 10, but I was uh, I was talking to my friend Bryce here, and he was saying, well, we're on for two hours, right? And I'm going, yeah, but... You'll, you'll be surprised at how fast that time goes. So I hope I hope it uh, I hope it flowed well for you and and had a chance to uh, feel comfortable uh, being here. It, it what a great pleasure to have you in studio with me tonight. Thank I, you. I know that when we were at the uh, uh, we we did the Surrounded by Sound uh, festival and I I, uh, I I just walked up and introduced myself to to Bryce 
I said, you know, I have this little radio show. I'd like to see if you'd uh, be interested in coming on and talking sobriety. And he reached out his hand. He said, absolutely, I'd love to join you. And it just made me feel so good inside, you know. Uh, you know, it's that's the part of the, the community of recovery that, that is so um, authentic mm -hmm. and, and genuine, honest, uh, talking about people. We were talking off the air here and I, and I wanted to get to this because I think it's very important and and I know he's not gonna he's not gonna make a big deal out of this but I am um, the idea of okay he's been doing this the sober living homes for a little over a year now right mm -hmm. and he he and I'm trying to make this into a mathematical equation he he's asking for a, a commitment of three months with okay with each person in 36 beds that he has Okay, I'm not a mathematician. You guys do the math. Think about the people that he's helped. Now, then, then Bryce brought up the great idea, the, the the great fact of this is, even those people that have occupied those beds, those aren't the only people that that have been helped. Right. It's the uh, you know like they touch. They have families. They have friends. Um, they, their lives touch other people's lives, and there's a ripple effect, you know, I believe. It's not just the people I help, it's the people that they're in contact with who get help, and the people that they help, you know what I mean? You just keep paying it forward, and it just goes out exponentially, hopefully. Well, and the other thing is, Bryce, check it out. Those people <clears throat> that do achieve that type of sobriety and, and joy mm -hmm. in life that find that, you know, that exuberance and going after that big life and in you know in are actually uh joyful and happy about their sobriety they're going to go help others too so that ripple effect becomes even 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 bigger yeah you know it's it's like it's like a tsunami it, it just it just gains momentum mm -hmm. so that i mean what a what a blessing what an absolute uh, i i just it it tells me that people that find recovery that give back in service are so important. It's divine work. It is, you know, and, and I think, you know, addicts and alcoholics have a spiritual hunger, you know. I, I think my core issue, our core issue, what connects all of us is that feeling inside, you know, like we're just not comfortable on our own skin. Absolutely. And somehow we look externally to fix it, you know, alcohol or drugs or relationships or money or food or gambling. And you have, like, at some point we stop and we look inward. You know, happiness is an inside job, is what they say. You mm -hmm. know? And, and until we stop looking externally to fix ourselves, you know, um, we're, we're not going to get well, you know. And now, now that, you know, once, you st once we do start to look inward and we start to get better, like, we overflow. And you have to help other people, you know what I mean? Because I'm overflowing. I got to go give it to somebody else, you mm -hmm. know. And it makes me feel good. I feel good in my heart when I help other people. Well, and that and that to me brings it all the way back to our scripture tonight. It's like it's exactly saying about what, what Christ said. It says, go love your neighbor as I have loved you. And if you feel like you've been loved and helped out of like uh, this, this, this desperate uh, malady of ours of addiction, you want to go help people, and you do feel good about helping others. Sometimes bringing it down to the lowest, sometimes I say, what is the lowest common denominator of, of our life now? Uh, without, without the drug, without, okay, it's not, it's not achieving success. It's not, it's not gaining material. It's not, what it is, is basically a sense of being fulfilled in who we are, simply who we are, and service and helping others, mm -hmm. and feeling that that God is is there, He cares, He's helping us, and He's side by side with mm -hmm. us. That that companionship of the the Creator of of the universe is you, that's the lowest common denominator. That and if you have that, you've got it all. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's one of those things. I I so commend you in the work that you do, and uh, I, you know, I'm I'm so and and I love the fact that you're just down in the trenches with with everybody in there. You you have relationships with not only the people that are helping you with 
uh, run your homes, but also the, the, the tenants and the clients themselves. It's, it's important. I had a pastor on um, who's got a, a ministry called uh, Jesus on Cold Facts. And, you know, it, it, was, it was leading by example because he wanted to do something different. He'd been a pastor in a big church for a long time. And he started ministering, bringing his ministry to the, to the people on East Colfax. And one, of the, one time, one of the, the people said, well, when, when you, do you go to your, your home in Aurora after you come down and help us? And he realized, well, no. He said, I need to move in with these people mm -hmm. and live with them and understand exactly where they're coming from in order to, for them to relate. It's that same relation ship that we have as, as alcoholics and addicts. Yeah, and I, I don't ever want to go back to that. You know, I have to give it away to keep it. You know what I mean? I never want to live like that again, that hopeless feeling, you know. And, um, you know, that's, they people helped me. They, people helped me um, for no reason other than it helps them to help. And so you just, I, you just got to keep that thing going, you know. And the funny thing is, it's like, I have these problems, you know, money and relationships. They disappear. They disappear when I do what I'm supposed to do, which is help other people. You know, yeah. Those problems just go away. It's amazing. And and you, you you wouldn't you don't really know how that feels until you get you you begin to get a steady dose of it. And when you realize that we are meant to to be together, uh, we are meant to help each other. To this journey is is a journey of of souls and and people helping each other. Uh, find the best they can be, be the best they can be. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you get when you get that uh, feeling of, of sobriety, and the other thing is, is it, it helps people to stay focused. Because I I've seen so many people that get well, and then they forget how they got well. Put their hands on the wheel and run their own life again. Mm -hmm. You know, I just think there's a natural law to the universe, which is what I put out, I get back. You know what I mean? And yeah. if I'm selfless and I, and I get it back, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it it's, never fails. It's, a, it's, a, it's like the same thing as, as um, you know, as, as charity. I mean, you, the, you give and you don't even have to think about, it's the idea of giving it will come back to you some some way, somehow. We've got about a minute and a half, and I just wanted to say, um, again, thank you so much, uh, Bryce Hancock from Mile High Sober Living. For those of you that want to find out more about uh, Mile High Sober Living, just log on. It's milehighsoberliving.com. You can find out if you have questions, uh, you can find out who to call and, and find out how you, maybe there's somebody that you know that can benefit from this. Um, I'm sure there is, and this could be the way to freedom and a way to a life of, of fulfillment and sobriety. Thank you so much, Bryce, hey, thanks for, a lot, for uh, coming out all the way out to uh, uh, North Glen on a uh, on a Sunday night. Sunday night. And yeah, at least the, hopefully the 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 trap you won't have traffic on the way back. None. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's a big deal in Colorado now. <laughs> So, well, uh, once again, um, Mr. Bryce Hancock from uh, Mile High Sober Living. I've got friends that are uh, that are one of the one of those thirty six um, pillows in in his uh, uh, homes, and it's working well. And uh, I hope to see uh, him around and and talk more about it. But I will be talking up uh, your organization, and it, it is a, a pleasure and an honor to have you with us. Thank you. So. Okay, well, we're gonna. I'm gonna walk uh, uh, Bryce to the door so we can get him on his way. It's my favorite part of the program. After this, this is Deja Bray. We'll be right back. So I forgot the TV was on. So I forget. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put one other is that song. A big on. part of the show is it? It's a TV show. Well, it's yeah, it's 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 TV and um, radio and yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I looked at the camera very much. Does that matter? No. Okay. Not at all. <laughs> okay. Good. Um, good. It's uh, it's, it's just one of those things we just you just put them up. You know, I you know here's the here's the thing, um, Bryce is I usually have my my Facebook live going towards flip this way, 
but then the letters are backwards. Right. And I haven't, and I hadn't got it. So I realized somebody was finally told me, he says, well, what you need to do is do it so the right camera is getting it. So, but anyway, this is my favorite part of it. Um, this is where I get to give you your, your, um, your parting gifts. Okay, gifts? Um, yeah. Good show. Um, these are your official cool. Conscious Conversation mugs. All right. And Dot Star CD, I, I, I see if you liked it. It's awesome. So, Thanks a lot. You're welcome. <laughs> Pleasure's all mine. Grab my card, too. Okay. And so you have that. Mm. And uh, uh, the, my wife always says, she says, she says, this is, that's my favorite part of the show, too, when you, when you give. Give the gifts? Yeah. yeah. Why is that? I don't know. She just like, she Maybe just. You're coming home soon? Uh, maybe that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot. Well, thank uh, you. And awesome. Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate it. I'll send you a, uh, um, a jump drive uh, with, with the uh, audio and the, and the, uh, the show, if you're interested. Yeah. And it'll probably, it'll, it'll show up on uh, Facebook here in a, in a day or two. Okay. So I'll send you the link. Cool, man. Thanks, Stephen. Right on, man. Okay. Be safe. All right. Keep uh, up the good work. You gonna let me out? Yeah. Keep up the great work, Thank man. You. We are, we are back, and uh, wow, what a great night! Um, really, really thrilled about that. I'm gonna set ourselves up to uh, after this song to uh, sign off a little bit later than, but but it was worth every minute for me uh, to get to talk about this um, mile high sober living. These homes where where people find like minded people to live and work with and uh, work 12 steps with. Uh, Mike Bryce, uh, I think I can safely speak um, for him and, and me, me both. We both believe in the uh, 12 steps. But I love I love what he was saying also about that is that, you know, we where we are, you know, uh, proponents of 12 step work and the idea of, of uh, you know, uh, recovery uh, meetings we we also are are make, trying to make an impact, trying to make a uh, a change in, in just realizing, keeping an open mind on all ways to to recovery. the The idea being that the focus is recovery. We want to see people get well. We want to see people find and live their full potential as sober creative, inspired human beings. And that's a, a huge thing that uh, Bryce Hancock is doing with these, uh, with Mile High Sober Living. Couldn't be more pleased to have him with me this evening and, and, uh, and more enthused about the work he's doing. So I got to set up here. Uh, I got to get my song ready to go so I can sign off. And uh, I hope everybody's enjoyed the show tonight. What I gotta do though, now that I've got, now that I've got the uh, the writing is is now. So Facebook and UStream can see the writing right side. I got that figured out, but now I gotta be able to get it turned around or find it on the monitor so where I can see who's reacting and, and interacting with us on live Facebook. That is my goal for next week. And I'm so happy that we have people logged in still from Japan, Blackburn, Australia, Lehan, France, United Kingdom, Milton Keynes, United Kingdom, Mola de Barra, Italy, 
Russian Federation, all London, the big city of London, United Kingdom, Singapore, India, New Zealand as well. So many people from all over the world logged into Conscious Conversations tonight. It's time for me to get my song ready to go. I got one minute to do it. Okay, so we're going to sign off, and it's it's been a great night. I'm, I'm really psyched about how uh, this particular show went. What a, what a thrill. What a, what a privilege and an honor to have such an exciting guest tonight on Conscious Conversations. Here we go. We'll sign off here re real soon. Yeah. I was getting into the music there. It's one of my favorite songs from Batsero. Well, it has been an amazing night. I'm so very, very grateful to have such a compelling and interesting guest with me in studio here at KUHSDenver.com. Thank you, Bryce Hancock from Mile High Sober Living. Four houses in the metro area of Denver, Colorado, with 36 beds for people who are living sober lives and the, having fellowship together and learning about a routine of living sober and making it last and being happy and joyful about it, finding their true potential. I sure appreciate you being here, Bryce. Thank you so much. Next week on Conscious Conversations, I am so delighted to have one of my best friends and a person that I so admire uh, from my heart and soul, uh, author, award-winning author and uh, dancer, and also uh, guest host right here on KUHSDenver.com, Ms. Laura Patchett will join me for the entire show next week. We've got so much to talk about, so many different things that we can talk about and we'll have that next week i'm looking so much i'm looking so forward to that a special shout out to my soulmate sandra i thank you for all the time we get to be, spend together and i love you with all my heart and soul prayer requests we're asking for worldwide prayer for healing for Roz, and for also people who are suffering from cancer and other debilitating health issues, including Ronnie and Rich and Stephanie, also daughter of a friend of ours named Andy, who is facing cancer. People that are dealing with these terrible diseases and their families who are struggling right along with them. Heavenly Father, bring them comfort. Bring them your strength and courage and love. Each and every soul battling addiction and substance use disorder, including Adam and Gabriel. Good news is Gabriel's doing well. I'm so happy to hear that. He's finding recovery in the, the rooms of community support. Connie, Connie Jolie, and Tim, Zach, Bruce, David, and Stephen, and so many others 
strength to endure consequences of substance abuse and curse to begin sobriety fresh. Even when there's been a relapse or a or stumble, to get back up there and give another go, always keep trying. Don't stop trying until you find the miracle, until the miracle happens, as we say. Ray needs your, your prayer, but I'm happy to report that my good friend Ray is, oh my goodness, what an answer to prayer. Ray's doing good. He's doing great. Better each day. I get a chance to visit with him every week, and well, all I can say is hallelujah. Remember, I pray better than I play. Oh, where is Dot Zero this week? Well, we've got lots of shows, so it's not as busy as last week. We played every night last week. But you can go to dotzeroband.com. That is dotzeroband.com and find out all the places that we're playing. I want to tell you a little bit more about Catalina next week as well. Remember, there are many true doctrines, but there's only one tr doctrine of truth, which is Jesus Christ, the risen living Son of Almighty God, who came here to sacrifice his life so that we could live. He conquered sin and death. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ lives and has conquered sin and death forever. Here's our benediction. May the Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God, our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Amen. And in the words of Charles Dickens, from his famous story that is in many ways my own story, a story of redemption and reclamation. God bless us, everyone. For Conscious Conversations, I'm Stephen Ray Watts. For another week, good night. God bless you. And we are clear from radio, and I just want to say, sign off on both uh, Facebook and Ustream. I just want to say uh, a prayer for everyone this week. Remember, we talk about the golden rule. We talk about love yourself, love your neighbor as you do yourself. But I say we take it to that scripture in John, scripture of the living word of our Lord, our Heavenly Father, my command is this from Jesus. Love each other as I have loved you, not as you would love yourself. Think of what Jesus, how Jesus loved us. He loved us so much that he gave his life so that we could all be forgiven our sins. Again, I say, John 15, verse 12, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Thank you, Jesus. For all of us, let's have a blessed week. Good night, and God bless you all. From Conscious Conversations and Stephen Ray Watts. Yeah, I mean it's and it's it's important um, to hear. Okay, I think I got a good. Okay, we are.